everyone, we're back with some quilting math today. And uh, we're just, we decided to bring out these lessons because we had some questions on finished and unfinished and, you know, odd shapes and all the rest of the stuff from my, my students. So I was kind of like, well, we should probably address this and put up some definitions on quilting math and explain to you how the math works behind the definitions. So uh, the other thing, too, is our, when this is being filmed, my black 301A, that was my mom's sewing machine, is in the spa, hopefully for just a yearly checkout, so we're not able to show you any free motion quilting on her just yet, so we'll have to figure out how to fix this. So, here we go, we're gonna do some definitions. The first thing we're gonna define is unfinished. Now, unfinished talks about quilt block size. Now, there's different quilt blocks that I have here. For examples, this is the Jan Kingwell Glitter uh, block. Now this is a beautiful little block. It comes in her book, Quilt Lovely. And um, this one will measure, when it's finished, at 10, inch, 10 inches unfinished, and then four, four and a half inches, I believe, or four and a quarter inches unfinished. Right? So you're taking the measurement before this is being sewn into anything. Right? But in this block, you can see that there's little black blocks in here. Now these, before you, you uh, sew them in, they're like, they're almost, they almost read like an inch and an uh, inch and three quarters, but, yeah, an inch and three quarters, but the finished size of them is quite a bit smaller because it's less your seam allowance, right? So when we're talking about unfinished and finished sizes, Usually, like a 12 and a half unfinished block is considered a 12 inch finished block, right? So this is where the other day we showed you my favorite scrappy block, right? It's called a potato chip block. This now measures 12 and a half inches unfinished, right? Inside the quilt block or inside a quilt, it's going to be 12 inches finished. These, this block here is made up of units that are two inches by three and a half, but in the quilt, it finishes at an inch and a half by three, right? So this is where we have to now start thinking about, okay, finish, are you talking finished size or unfinished size? Now, this is one that I hand piece, and this is a 12 and a half inch square, right? So when we start talking now about odd shapes, which we will be talking about here right away, you know, like how do you measure, how do you determine the finished size of an odd shape, right? Like a diamond or an octagon or a hexagon, right? So let's just put this out here for now. Just get our definitions, just so we kind of know what we're talking about here. The unfinished definition is what size is it after you finish sewing? size after finish sewing finish sewing finish sewing and that's before you put it into the quilt right or uh, the sub the subunit like in the case of the potato chip block what size is the rectangles like what size were the subunits right what helps you get to the finished product subunits. Okay, here's going to be a lot of units. Okay, the finished size is the unfinished size size less less minus the seam allowance. which in the case of quilting is usually a quarter inch on each side. So now you're minusing, this usually is 0.5 of an inch. Usually in quilting, it's 0.5 of an inch, right? So now your odd shapes, this is where this becomes a bit of a, okay? It becomes a bit of a, a, a how, do I, how do I determine my odd shapes? How do I determine what size my hexes are? Well, quilters measure 
hexagons and octagons and like you know those those uh, 60 degree triangles they measure them differently like with this item this is what I use for my to make my cardboard templates for my hexagons now I'm gonna get my cameraman to show you what that looks like up close okay so now the manufacturer of this Pfizer template or the, the template maker they measure from the largest points they measure from point to point the longest point and that's how they'll sell it to you quilters however measure from the little point to the little point they'll measure across the top so for instance on the octagon here that I have handy right this looks like a big octagon and a manufacturer of an octagon press would measure from the largest point to the largest point right so they're going to measure this from this point here to this point there quilters don't do that we measure from this point to this point which is two inches this is a two inch octagon but it certainly doesn't look like a two inch octagon because this unfinished octagon is two and a half inches across and the finished octagon size now is two inches right so the same two with the diamond shapes in here these are 45 degree diamonds right so this diamond now is two inch finished and two and a half inches unfinished now and it's because we're measuring from point to point here for the finished size but on the back and you can see all the hand piecing here from the back we're measuring from tip to tip and that's two and a half inches right so I'm hoping that makes a lot more sense and if you're getting into English paper piecing and you're trying to find let's say a one inch hexi or something like this like I say, the Pfizer's do, do have the little hand press, but you have to watch because they're measuring from a completely different, different uh, scale than a quilter is. So this one, this one here is a one inch hexi. It will finish a one inch hex, hexi, but Pfizer's will sell it to you at a two inch, right? Because that's from the largest point to the largest point, right? So I'm hoping this helps you because we're going to need you're going to need to understand the definition between finish and unfinish when we start going through the rest of the quilting math that we're going to talk about here or the next lesson on the quilting math will be uh, how to how many blocks to make how many blocks do I make when I want to make a twin size or a lap quilt or whatever so this is going to be our next lesson so I'm hoping you understand this so I'm going to admit to you I'm quite worried about my sewing machine I don't like it when it's off at the spa because I'm always worried about somebody dropping her and, and breaking her and she become unable we're unable to fix her because she is an older machine. She's mom bought her in the fifties, so I mean she's you know almost seventy years old. She's still she still so makes a beautiful stitch. She makes and she just is part of my mom. So I'm a little worried about her, but I'm sure she'll be okay. The, the guys that we're taking her to are really good about it, and they understand it's a vintage machine, and they understand it's my mom's. So they're going to take really good care of it. So I want to just thank you for coming back. My um, We've had some viewer requests about meeting my husband, and he's just like this he's doing this kind of motion to me right now he does one <laughs> he's very shy he will hold up things for me and he'll do all sorts of things but I think he's just no I'm not doing this so we'll keep talking to him about it probably never happened but we you know my husband Les is just a wonderful man and uh, but he's very shy he's very camera shy so what I want to do is thank you for coming. We are both so pleased at how our little channel has grown and it's because of you. So thank you very much. We want you to have a great week ahead and we'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye. If you have questions about what you saw in this video 
or you have ideas for content or something you want to see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also, while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.